from January 20, like fourth, I think it was to basically to the beginning of hunting, hunting season, I was approaching 20,000 arrows. Because it does make it look like it's a little bit faster. And, and that's, you know, that's the sexy thing is to have a, a really fast, but If you're wondering if the bow has enough oomph to kill an elk, which is probably not my number one question, yes, yes, your bow has enough oomph to kill an elk. Hey guys, welcome back to the eHunter Newscast. I'm your host for this episode, Taryn Hunt. On today's podcast, we talk about hunting news as it relates to products. Now, you guys are probably familiar with us doing hunting news about some hunting products such as Vortex Optics. This is a good time to thank Vortex Optics for sponsoring everything that we do here at eHunter. Uh, it's actually a great time to be checking out Vortex Optics. Right now we're we're getting into that scouting season. We know what tags we have for this upcoming fall and so we're starting starting to do some of that scouting. And for me personally, that includes spending a lot of time behind glass. And so I spend a lot of time behind my, my Vortex Binos, my Vortex Razor HD spotting scope, if you haven't checked them out, I, I encourage you to do so. They have some amazing stuff. So whether you're looking for that upper echelon of glass, like the Razor stuff, or you know if you want something that, that's more budget friendly, um, down in the Viper or the Diamondback uh, platforms, th they pretty much have something for everybody. So, But today's podcast, we are going to talk about some products and some of the, the news as it relates to products. And if you're an archery hunter, this podcast is for you. We're going to spend a lot of time today talking about the new bows for 2020. I have a special guest. His name is Garrett Weaver. Many of you probably know him from the On Point podcast. Garrett has been doing the On Point podcast for quite some time now. He is a big gear guru, especially when it comes to archery, and he is a wealth of information. I'm, I'm amazed at his knowledge and the things that he knows about bows. And so we run through the new bows for 2020. We really focus on the big three or big four, however you want to look at it. Um, you know, the Hoyts, the Matthews, the Botex, um, and he, he breaks them down, talks about some of the advantages of each one of them, some of the disadvantages of them, and then we just kind of talk about what bow would be best for you. And that, like I said, everybody knows what tags they have. They're getting ready for the hunts coming up this fall or late summer. If you're one of those people that drew an archery tag, again, this, this podcast is for you, especially if you're in the market for a new bow or even are thinking about getting a new bow. Um, you'll want to listen to this podcast because some of the bows, he's like, yes, let's, let's, it's time to buy a new bow. Other ones, he's like, nope. If you have last year's model or even two years ago, keep it. So anyways, great podcast. I want to tell Garrett thank you for, uh, for being on the podcast. Again, he is awesome. So and if you guys have any questions, reach out, send me an email. My email is terrenh at ehunter.com. That's T-E-R-R-O-N-H at ehunter.com. You can also send us messages on Facebook instagram you know all those good social media platforms so well guys let's jump right into the podcast with garrett weaver all right welcome back to the e-hunter podcast um i'm your host Taryn hunt again back for this podcast got a special guest on today the, the guest today uh, that i have um he's a podcaster himself he, he's someone that i've kind of looked up to for a while he, he's just <laughs> I'm a gear guy myself, but but this guy takes it to a whole whole new level. I mean, he he, he knows everything about all, especially <laughs> bows. And so I'm super excited to have Garrett Weaver of the On Point Podcast with me today. Garrett, how are you, man? I'm great. How are you, Taryn? I'm doing fantastic. Appreciate you joining me today. I, I'm stoked for this podcast, by the way. Dude, I, I, like we were saying before we started pushing the record button, I'm like, man, it's just nice to be able to talk bows and not have to get into the tuning and just like, like you said, like 30,000 foot view at them and just, just talk. It's going to be a fun, I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready to go. Well, so. And this is such good timing too, because I swear everybody right now is they're, they're buying bows and getting their equipment ready for the hunts. Everybody pretty much knows what they have for this, this upcoming summer and fall for hunts. And so everybody's want to get new bows, want to get their bows tuned, and so, man, this is perfect timing. But, Garrett, before we get into it, I think most everybody know who you knows who you are, but if you wouldn't mind, could you give us just a, a quick introduction about yourself and kind of what you do? Yeah, so uh, I'm from Oregon, um, been hunting, fishing my whole life, just like probably everybody else that listens to this podcast. Um, started doing YouTube a couple years ago. Um, and then it kind of was more of a selfish angle. I was just posting videos of me making cool shots and stuff. And then people were like, well, how'd you do that? And so 
um, that kind of evolved into telling people the gear I was using and then they wanted to hear about the gear I was using and then to doing full on gear reviews and then actually, well, maybe I could do something with this. And so, um, it kind of just snowballed into, into what on point is today where, um, you know, I, my, my kind of my slogan on Instagram is, you know, sharing my passion for bow hunting and helping uh, others along the way. And that's exactly what my goal is to do and, and having these kind of, kind of conversations and just helping people learn about their gear, become more effective with their gear, learning about how effective their gear can be out to what range and, and just really, uh, getting good information to people who need it. And so, um, being from Oregon, um, a lot of big game around here. Haven't hunted East a lot. Um, I did get a crack at your guys' white tails over there in Alabama and, um, with Brian from day six. And, uh, yeah, like he's, you know, he told me, he's like, you're not hunting deer, you're hunting crackheads. These things are on edge. I'm like, <laughs> okay, okay. And, and, uh, that's absolutely right. So you guys are, you guys are hunting some very sketchy deer over there, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit different than our blacktail that don't look up ever. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's fun to have these conversations. I have a lot of guys over East, um, getting hold of me asking about elk setups and, you know, is this enough? Is that enough? And, and just, you know, a lot of good conversations about all that stuff. So that's a little bit about me. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just very, very thankful that you're having me on. So, uh, I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, absolutely, man. Kind of like what I started with. You, you kind of you are that gear guru. I mean, I've watched all your videos on YouTube. I've listened to all your podcasts, and uh, you know, you, mm. you get into the nitty gritty of some of these things. And and I've I've taken a lot of those YouTube videos and all of those podcasts for my own personal hunting. You know, things that I either mm-hmm. I want to put on my bow or I want to make adjustments to my bow. Um, I, I watched one not too long ago about building arrows and stuff like that, and so or, mm-hmm. uh, tuning your arrows and. Things that I, you know, I just never really thought about until I started watching some of your videos and realized, man, they make a big difference. And then putting them into practice makes a huge difference. And so, being a gear mm-hmm. guy is a good thing because it, it, it does make you better at what you do. It makes you, it, it, I hate to say that gear makes you a better hunter because there's a lot of other things that go into hunting than just gear. But you know, effective. It, yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, being being effective, having good gear to be be effective, and so. So what I want to do today, and the reason I'm, I have Garrett on the podcast today, is to, you know, like, like I said, everybody's getting to that point right now where they're um, trying to get their bows ready or buying new bows um, mm-hmm. for the upcoming hunts. And so I want to talk today about some of the new bows for 2020. I mean, it's big news out there. You know, some of the, the new bows are pretty spectacular. Hoyt's got a great new bow. Uh, Matthews has a great new bow. And I'm going to be a little bit biased when it comes to Matthews because that's what I'm shooting. But <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, what I'd like to do, Garrett, is, is just start off. If you wouldn't mind kind of giving us a quick, yeah, exactly, 30,000 foot overview uh, of some of the bows you shoot we talked about it a little bit before we got on this on this call of like, like your big four if you wouldn't mind just kind of running us through the, those big four kind of talk about um you know about the new bows what makes them special that kind of stuff yeah so um since well i guess we'll just start with matthews since since you're a matthews guy and i've i probably out of all the manufacturers i probably pissed off the matthews guys the most and so <laughs> uh and, and that's because i don't hold punches man I, i'm joking around when i say a lot of these things and so um, I, I like Matthews. They've come out with some great bows, starting with the Halon six, which is probably the bow that made me the shooter that I am today, where it just made shooting really fun. Again, I came from shooting in X force for like six years, um, or how, however long, how, how many years I had, I had it for a long time. Um, I had a tree stand edition and then I had the regular X force edition. And from going from that to a Halon was like a huge jump in accuracy is way more shootable, way more fun to shoot. Um, I did some really cool things with that bow and it, you know, I, I just really became, you know, much better archer because of that bow, because I just, you know, I, the year I bought that Halon, I bought, or I I launched about, um, I was, I'm, I'm kind of guy that would actually keep track of it. So (laughs) I had charts and stuff. I shot, uh, before August, I was at 18,000 arrows, um, from January 20, like fourth, I think it was to basically to the beginning of hunting, hunting season, I was approaching 20,000 arrows. So, um, yeah, and all that um, up until about a month before hunting season was on the factory string, which impressed the hell out of me. They were using zebra strings, um, and yeah, so fantastic platform to build off of. And why I bring up the Halon Six is because they've been kind of riding that Halon Six for a few years. So you, you know, you kind of had the the grid pattern with the you know the Z Sevens and the Creeds and all that stuff. 
the grid pattern risers. Well, now they've just been riding the Halon kind of style riser. And, you know, they had the Halon and then they had, I called it the mini Halon. Pissed a lot of Matthews guys off. <laughs> it's not a mini Halon. I'm like, yes, it is. Basically. It and is. then, yeah, you know, and, and they flirted with every ATA. Uh, I think the original Halon was like 31. And then they went to 32, and then they went below, and then now they're the 28 and 31 and a half, and then the Traverse was like 32, I think. Mm -hmm. And so they've pretty much done everything they can do with that platform. And so now we're here with the VXR 28 <laughs> and the VXR 31 and a half. So, um, so what you're getting with that bow is is you're getting the same cams, you you know, the cross centric cam system. And then what some differences this year though is you know. I, I, I think that, you know, when you start running out of, of performance that you can put into a bow, you start adding flashy kind of gadgets or a little bit of changes or something like that. And I don't mean to de be demeaning when I bring up something like the switch weight um, or the SES, the silent connect system. Mm -hmm. But these aren't things that really, um, you know, the, the switch weight, you guys, you can be, that's a performance changer. But the SES system not really. Uh, the bridged riser they went with this year, I do like that because bridge bridge bridged risers are known to be more stable and more shootable um, but you're having the same cams for quite a few years now they did add the switch weight technology which makes it allowable to change weights in five pound increments without having to touch an allen wrench um, on the limb bolts so um, that's really cool you don't have to swap cams or anything like that or limbs really um, you can get everything out of one basically module and if you have a different switch weight you can switch it out with just with just an Allen wrench, pretty much. So um, I do like what they did there, but um, you know they've they've been really dead in the hand. They've been really quiet. They've been fast, um, and I just don't feel like the other bows really have been pushing them that much to really change the game that much. Um, I think they've kind of been cru on cruise control for the last couple of years, and I say that because they they were ahead with the Halon. I mean, they really that year was that was an awesome bow. And, uh, and you know, some Matthew guys are probably getting mad at me here, but I think we're going to see Matthew switch it up this year. They've got to, they've, they've ridden that platform long enough that it's, it's time to push themselves into a corner and come out with something new. And, um, I don't think they ever will because they're an Eastern bow company. Uh, but I'd love to see a carbon bow yes. come from Matthews. Mm -hmm. Uh, me personally, uh, you know, they could sell that thing for 16 to 1800 bucks um and i think they would kill it but most of their guys are hunting out of tree stands most of their guys are hunting out of blinds where they're des where they're de designing and developing these things and i just don't know if they really care about you know the guy packing you know around a bow for eight miles mm -hmm. so um that's why i think you're seeing you know a bow is approaching five pounds in weight from matthews so <laughs> um that's just my opinion i mean a lot of this uh, disclaimer uh, a lot of this is, is opinion based guys um, and that's why I do speed tests and I go over the, the, the specs here because that's all factual. But um, most of what I'm saying here is opinion-based. And if you don't agree with it, in, in the VXR31, like Taren, 31 and a half is your bow. That's your bow, man. Yeah. I mean, I, that's, that's totally cool. But, um, you know, for 1199 bucks, it's a great value. It's on par, unfortunately, with all the other bow prices nowadays. They're yeah. getting up there. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, and, and the 28 is 100 bucks cheaper. So... Um, with a six inch brace height, that's been pretty standard, um, with, with the rest of the models they've come out with 80 to 85% let off, uh, they're flirting around four and a half pounds. Uh, the, you know, the 28s at 4.44 and, and, uh, you're almost a quarter pound heavier with the 31 and a half. So, um, you're getting a pretty darn heavy bow, but unfortunately also, um, I shouldn't say unfortunately, you know, heavier bows are inherently more uh, stable, um, but man, I like being able to being able to put that weight where I want it, not being forced to just carry it around, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but that's that's just my opinion. So, what what made you go with the thirty one and a half? You know, when I went to the shop and shot both of the the twenty eight and the thirty one and a half, I, I just felt like I was a bit more stable with that. And, and you know what? To your point, so when I went, I shot every bow. I shot the the Hoyt. I shot the Elite. I shot all these other bows. I love the Hoyt for one reason. This may be a good se segue into going to talk about Hoyt, but it was mm -hmm. so light. I loved how light that RX4 was compared to the Matthews. But but when I started shooting it, and I and I shot, I didn't shoot as many arrows of you as you shot. I'm sure through them, but um, as I started shooting through them, that uh, the Matthews, the 31 and a half, just felt so stable to me. Like you said, mm -hmm. dead in the hand, and, and so much smoother. 
to me. And I know it shouldn't feel any smoother than the 28. It, I mean, they're basically sitting on the same platform, um, but it did. It felt very smooth, mm-hmm. very fast, very, you know, I just, just everything that I really wanted. And I think a bow kind of speaks to a person when they shoot it. Um, mm-hmm. And when, and that one <clears throat> really did. As soon as I, I shot, I was like, yeah, that, that's it. That That's my baby right there. Yep. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's ultimately, you know, I could give all the reviews and in and, and the end of all the videos uh, that I do on YouTube, I always tell you to go shoot the bow, yeah. you know, like yep. you need to go shoot this thing for yourself and tell me whether I'm wrong or not, or, you know, make up your own mind, shoot what's best for you. And, and, you know, kudos for you to, for shooting all the bows. I've been in the archery shops too many times and it's not a slide against Cameron Haynes, but you know, he was shooting the turbos for a while. And I would watch the guy go in there said, I want to shoot the bow that Cameron Haynes is shooting. I'm like, oh, wow, that's that's kind of cool. You know, like he's getting into bow hunting and Cameron Haynes obviously is is an influence on him. Yeah. So I watched out of the corner of my eye and this is back, well, I think when the Defiant turbos were out or something like that, but mm-hmm. um, a very unshootable bow in my opinion <laughs> and uh, especially for a new guy. And he pulls back the bow and that bow is just trying to yank him off the back wall. You can see it's just going eh, eh, mm-hmm. eh, and it just keeps pulling him off the back wall and he keeps catching it and and finally manages to get the arrow to get off the shelf and, and, and shoots it and and uh, just says, looks back, and I love this bow. I'm like, good God. <laughs> good, good God, buddy. You have no you idea, have no idea. what you're looking for. Didn't shoot any other bows. Didn't do nothing. Oh, and, man. you know, I, I, I get it, red team, blue team, you know, but at the same time, you got to shoot what's best for you. And and this year, um, you know, I, I went with – the first year they, they had the Hoyt uh, – rx series come out i bought it and it was despite everything i preach about you know like accuracy first what are you the most accurate with what can you be repeatable what do you like the most i wasn't the most accurate with that bow i just wanted a carbon bow yeah and i'd never owned one before and i wanted it and um you know they look cool and and um and cameron and so, Haynes shoots it yeah shit, man cameron Haynes was shooting it that year and uh so you know i shot that bow and you know killed a few animals with it and and never really made an amazing shot with it you know all my shots were kill shots and and i think they were all you know in the lungs but they were never like shooting behind the pen you know it was never super accurate to me for me anyways and and um and so i you know i went back to my you know let's let's shoot what's best for us and then um you know just kind of made that point i just want to make that point here um, that with, with the Hoyts, I've been extremely critical of the Hoyts for the last since, well, since they came out with the RX series, the red work series. And, and I think, um, that was really pushing the limit of prices at that time. Cause that was a $600 or $1,600 bow. That was about $600, um, more than the next bow down from it. So you're, you know, you're seeing, I'm, I suck at math here. So if I'm wrong, about a 60% increase in, in, in cost, but in my head, I'm like, okay, are you seeing a 60% increase in performance? Right. Is there a 60% increase in value there? And straight up, there, there just wasn't. Not, not I, I don't know anybody that's bought a Red Works series bow that would that could tell you straight face that there's 60% better than any of the aluminum aluminum series bows that they have. And so, um, if you want to get into the into the Hoyts here, um, you know, Matthew or uh, PSE's got um, uh, carbon bows as well, and, and we can start comparing those, but um, you know, stop me if you, if you want to make a point or have any questions in here, but, no, um, I think let's do that. Let's jump into the, the Hoyt, the RX four, what, you know, the details of it, um, what makes it special. Like I said, the thing that made it special to me was just, well, one, it's a carbon bow. It looks cool. It's what Cameron Haynes who shoots. Mm-hmm. I, I get all that. And that, that is cool. Don't get me wrong. But the thing that was for me, it was, it was just so freaking light. I loved how light that thing was, but yeah, let's jump right. into the specs of it, the details of it. So yeah, so if you're looking at like the the alpha and the ultra, um, all right, can you still hear me there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, my screen went black. So oh. if you're looking at the alpha, um, you're at 29 and a half, and pretty much the specs are pretty darn similar between these and the aluminum bows, right? It's just carbon's the only difference yeah. in really weight. So um, 29 and a half for the uh, ATA for the alpha, 34 for the ultra, and then the turbos are 31. Um, the brace heights for the alpha are six and one eighths, which is a pretty healthy, pretty happy medium. Um, that's that's right in there uh, for a lot of where the bows are at today. The ultra expectedly should be longer. It's at six and three quarters and the turbo is at five and seven eighths, which is short. Wow. You're getting to the point where my evoke 31 is right now. And when I don't shoot a lot and then, then I go back out and hit the range, I might hit my arm because my form isn't where it should be. Mm-hmm. It, it, it just 
it, and we can get into this here, but you know, shorter axle axle bows. I don't know if you want me to break that yeah, down. Yeah, let's stuff, do it. Yeah, but, I think that'd be great information for people. Yeah, so you know, the, the Matthews have six, and like I said, that's right there in the money with where a lot of bow manufacturers kind of want to be. It's good for speed. It's good for not hitting your forearm. It's kind of right in the middle. Um, if I'm a newer shooter, I would probably want to stick with at least bottom bottom minimum a six inch uh, brace height, and then try and get closer to seven. So if I'm if I'm shooting an ultra, I'm giving myself a lot more forgiving bow. Um, it's a lot more stable on the shot. And what I mean by stable, it's a longer bow. Um, it's 34 inches axle to axle versus a 29 and a half inch axle to axle. And if you're a new guy, I probably wouldn't even look at the turbo. You can shoot it and, and see if you like it, you know, do your own thing. But I personally wouldn't, wouldn't go that route. Um, but you know, it, inherently it's going to allow the shooter to make more mistakes, uh, a shorter brace height will, and you're going to get a more speed out of a shorter brace height, but you're going to get more forgiving out of a longer. And that's basically, um, the difference is there 30,000 foot view well, differences. Well, a new shooter is going to want more of that forgiveness rather than the speed. I mean, you, you can make up the, for the speed with accuracy. If you can be accurate with it, the, the forgiveness is what they need. Yeah. And, and for guys that are hunting extremely cold, I think I take this in consideration as well for guys that are hunting extreme temperatures and they're having a big puffy jacket and then they snag their sleeve on the way to shooting a deer when they release that arrow, that's a factor. And that happens every year. And a lot of guys, I mean, I'm kind of a dork. I'll be out on a, on a hot day if I haven't done it yet. And I have a cold weather hunt coming up. Um, I'm going to wear what I'm wearing for that hunt just to make sure that my binding harness isn't catching on anything. My sleeves aren't catching on anything. My hood isn't catching on anything. Is there going to be any complications before that hunt comes around? Can I get rid of any of these errors now before I hit the woods? And I don't think guys really think about that. I have friends that shoot a quarter or uh they'll either shorten their d loop up or they'll shorten the draw up uh, draw length up just slightly if they're hunting a cold weather because they know that there's going to be a bigger area around their forearm that's going to catch on a string so when you start doing that with brace heights that three six that extra three quarters of a brace height is going to help i mean yeah. that that's definitely going to be a factor so um you yeah. know I, I would push guys towards the, you know the ultra um it's a sweetheart of a bow it's a turd for speed yeah sure but you know <laughs> we can get into that what debate the, here too what is the speed on that on the ultra do you, do you know off the top of your head uh 334 and that is ata um uh, so IBO would probably be about nine feet per second slower than that. So, um, or, or maybe eight feet per second slower than that. And a lot of bows, <laughs> I don't even know if you want to get into that, but ATA and IBO are different. Right. Um, uh, IBO is a little bit, um, slower. ATA is a little bit more accurate. Um, in my opinion, if you look at the way they measure them, um, but, um, ATA is, is, I think they use it because it looks better yeah. uh, or maybe, it, maybe it's cause it's more accurate. I don't know, but um, I, I think it's cause it looks better. I, I've seen that peaking up a little bit more using the ATA cause it does make it look mm -hmm. like it's a little bit faster. And, and that's, you know, that's the sexy thing is to have a, a really fast bow. And so if you can make that look a little bit faster, <laughs> I think they're using that more. <laughs> well, if you look at PSC, they give you both and I'm like, yes. dude, kudos to you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I love that. But um, so yeah, they're using ATA. So you can basically take about eight feet per second off of any of those speeds. So um, I would say probably quick math 226 uh for an ultra okay. realistically and it's funny because everybody that watches the reviews is like dude your speeds are slow i'm like no you know you're going online and you're hopping on a calculator and you're not taking in consideration heavy arrows and it, they're, they're more efficient because the you know you're losing less energy out of the bow and and guys really need to take a, a better look when they're when they're making those assumptions here uh, not to get on a soapbox but um you know, my, my speeds are often slower and on, on my videos and, and there's, there's a few reasons why. And if you, if you start scratching the surface, you'll see, Oh, I see he's shooting a 600 grain arrow. Right. And that, that arrow is actually faster than it should be according to my calculator, but is 400 grain arrows slower or 450 grain arrow slower. Um, and calculators don't take in consideration for that, um, for the most part, but, but you're, um, you're pretty upfront with that on your videos saying, you know, what, what grain of arrow you're shooting. And I've seen yeah. videos where you're shooting several different weights of, of arrows and showing what those different speeds are as well. Yeah. And, you know, and, and rests make a difference. Everybody wants to say, you know, whisker biscuit, it's 10 feet per second. No, dude, no, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, just get out of here with that. It's maybe two, maybe two. I've tested them and tested them different arrows, different fletchings. And 
I will give you three feet per second, and I am being nice. <laughs> really? See, I've always thought that same thing. I always thought that a whisker biscuit shaved off at least ten, but no, not the case, man. Huh? It's I've shoot I I've shot plenty of bows side by side. I've I've swapped rests with with the bows, and it's it's pretty minimal. I mean, everybody wants to bash on a whisker biscuit, but um, it's pretty minimal. And if you're getting ten feet per second difference check your tune i i don't i don't really know um i i not from my experience and i've shot used ones brand new ones um you know compared them versus um drop ways versus limb driven and i just i just haven't seen it and that's through different chronographs i've tried getting rid of so many different variables um three feet per second maybe maybe if you're and that's being generous i mean usually it's it's within a couple so well, that makes that makes me um, feel good because so my first ever bow i'm going to we're going to go down a rabbit hole here, but my yeah. first ever bow, I still have the bow. It's a Hoyt Tricon. Actually, I think you can respect this because I think you did a budget bow mm-hmm. with a Hoyt Tricon. Um, but I have a whisker biscuit on it, and I, I shot it through the chronograph and was really disappointed at how slow it was. And I thought, <laughs> maybe I need to change out that whisker biscuit to a drop away to get me a little bit more speed, but <laughs> maybe that's not going to do much. Uh, I, I personally, I mean, I, I think you're going to get, <sighs> yeah, get myself three. in trouble here. You're probably <laughs> going to get uh, better accuracy. And I don't think anybody can really argue with that statement. Um, I've gotten plenty just fine accuracy out of whisker biscuits with broadheads out to, you know, some guys are saying you can't shoot them past 40 yards, which is rubbish. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can, you know, I've, I've shot broadheads with whisker biscuits out to a hundred. Um, and it, it, you know, is it easier? I'm not going to say it's easier, but, um, I, I would prefer a drop away any day, right. but, um, you know, people like to, to, to crap on, whisker biscuits and i just don't think they've they've done the testing you know i mm-hmm. think it's just oh you know they're so simple and easy and, and it's just silly and all that friction i'm like dude you think veins make a huge difference for your speed too and they really don't um I've, I've done that testing as well and i just i just don't see it you know helical versus a straight fletch versus this there's not a huge difference in 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 the speed reduction there you I mean your shed velocity is pretty similar so um, but yeah, so the, the, the carbon bows over the, um, aluminum bows, you're only gaining, um, or you're only losing about four, um, you know, a half a pound max. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that the alpha at aluminum is 4.3 pounds and, and then the carbon bow is 3.9. Um, I will, I will talk about the, the difference between that and the uh the three and a half pound mach one so if you're going carbon there's there's a few reasons why man are they nice to hunt with in cold weather and yes if in idaho in the freezing freaking snow and it was like i was consciously like man my bow is not cold that's nice like i've hunted with a uh, you know an aluminum bow my whole life and the, that sucker would be freezing if you had to grab it well that's that's a nice benefit to a carbon bow yeah performance wise there's 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 not really anything there you're just a little bit of rate weight reduction but you're paying an extra six hundred dollars to have a warmer bow when you grab it in the snow and to have a four tenths of a uh you know less than half a pound weight reduction is that six hundred dollars really worth it um well, that, yeah it does look cooler <laughs> it does look cooler but that's exactly what ran through my head when i was sitting there looking at, at bows and exactly was that six hundred dollars worth that you know it and it does you can feel it when i was at you know when, when you're fully extended and you're you know got your pulled back on the bow you can feel a little bit of the weight difference but again like you just said is it worth that six hundred dollar difference mm-hmm. uh probably not no and and you know like like i said before you know is it 60 percent better <laughs> you know are yeah, you getting exactly. your bang for your buck and and i just don't i just don't see it man i really don't and and for guys that have that bow you know hey i bought it too i'm maybe i'm bashing on myself i'm not bashing on anybody but i i've been there done that bought it and and i've got the hat to prove it you know <laughs> i i've I don't believe that they're worth the money. And I think that's why you're seeing Cameron Haynes going back to shooting the regular aluminum bows as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and and for the guys that are Cameron Haynes, Cameron Haynes, hey, he's shooting an aluminum bow. So maybe you should make the switch. But um, outside of that, you know, you've got the turbo. It's at 350. Again, that's ATA. So you can back that down to probably about 341, 342, which is where a lot of the other bows are at. And so even for the turbos, I just don't see that there. And you're and, and the other bows are at a longer ATA to get those same speeds yeah. or pretty similar to those same speeds. So I think the biggest cost to value um, difference there is with the turbo uh, carbon bow because I just – I really – 5 and 7 eighths ATA, 
and real realistically, you're just over 340 IBO. You're still at four pounds. You're a 31 inch uh, ATA, which is kind of where I like. I like probably closer to 33, but um, I just, I just, man, that doesn't, that to me, that doesn't scream accuracy. Mm-hmm. So, um, but again, you can, you can make your own decision there. Um, did you, do you have any questions over the Hoyt stuff or anything to add there? Did I miss anything? No, I, I think that's great. That, that covers a lot of it. I've seen a lot of shooters go, you know, that are moving away from, from Hoyt going, well, I shouldn't even say moving away from Hoyt, moving away from the, the RX series move. Like you said, Cameron Haynes is moving to back to the aluminum bows. In fact, I think last yeah. year he shot the, the helix, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and so, you know, is that carbon is that warm bow whatever you know that cool look is it really worth it but like you just mentioned it it really comes down to accuracy whatever you get the most accuracy out of so yeah and i i will say the highlight the highlight to hoyt is draw draw cycle man uh, probably some of the best draw cycles in the world and when we compare that to like the matthews that we've already talked about it's a nicer draw cycle it is easier to pull throughout it's not as stiff and what i mean by that is basically it just feels like you're pulling less weight when you're really pulling the same amount so a hoyt at 70 pounds to me pulls like a 66 pound bow 67 pound bow and then a matthews at 70 pounds feels like 72 so it does that's yeah i mean that's that's in, in in the grips man grips are Hoyt's always have my favorite grips for as long as I can remember. Um, you know, Matthews has got those kind of flat back kind of style grips and they say that adds to accuracy, but the Hoyts are the so comfortable that like, that's it. To me, that's a selling point. It's the biggest thing I miss about the Hoyt. Cause that's what I have shot in the past <laughs> is Hoyt. And this is my first year going to Matthews and that honestly, that it's silly to even say it, but mm-hmm. that was the thing that I missed the most was that Hoyt grip that it, it is so comfortable. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think, like I said, they've had the, some of the best grips for, for, for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Since the and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, they're, they're a good bow, man. I mean, they, they have a lot to offer the, the Hoyts at 80 pound, like the ultra 80 pound, um, would be really a uh, sweet shooting bow. And you gain quite a bit going to 80 pounds. Um, I'm not sure what quite the jump is there, but I have quite a few friends that if they buy one, they buy it at 80 pounder and, and they're they're a very good bow for for 80 pound bow um probably feels like you're pulling 77 75 somewhere in there Mm -hmm. um you could probably you know get a few extra twists in a 70 pound bow and get it up to like 74 a lot of those bows come stock at 72 to 73 um but with a little bit of uh funking around uh with with the bow you could get that thing up to 75 um you know so kind of happy of both worlds there but um outside of the hoyt man that's really about it i i if you want more speed and more performance matthews is yours but you're going to pay for it with weight and you're going to pay for it with a with a harder to draw cycle um hoyt's back wall sucks i've said it for a long time um well for me they suck if you love a spongy back wall and you shoot with back tension they're a great bow. I mean, they are a fantastic bow for back tension shooters. You're not shooting off the limbs. It's not a super hard back wall. And, um, and, and it really allows you to shoot back tension better than, in my opinion, than a Matthews, which has got, which I like a solid back wall Yes, and, and it just doesn't budge. And so, uh, this year Hoyt did shore up their back walls a little bit. They are, they are, better than they have been in the past there is still a little bit of sponge there but it's probably 50 percent better than than last year's model so um that is something that i did like seeing them change and um that yeah that would that was a welcoming sight for me that was a that was a very um very nice thing to see through hoyt this year is they short up the back wall a little bit but not not all the way and that's probably kind of a happy medium right there so um if you pull really hard into the back wall and 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 I don't know if you want me to get into this, but if you pull hard into the back wall on a spongy bow, you're not going to pull yourself off target as easy. It's going to be um, probably more accurate for you. But if you're one of these guys that just is back tension the whole way, you're just, you're pulling, 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 and you're shooting a Matthews, you're going to pull yourself off and, and you're going to just be basically fighting the bow because you're pulling too hard into the back wall. Mm-hmm. And I know you said you hadn't shot the, the elites this year, correct? Right. I haven't. I, I do know. Man. <laughs> um, are they, are they stiff like they have been? Oh, their back wall that that out of all the bows I shot, that was the worst of the back walls. It was it just mm. it felt I don't even know how to explain it. Like it was stiff, but I wish I was the tech guru and could, or the testing guru that could put this into words because <laughs> I know that you could put it into words very well. But 
Man, out of all of them, that was the back. That was my least favorite. So when you get a chance, you ought to go grab one of those elite bows and, and shoot it. Mm-hmm. And you'll probably think that the Hoyt has the most amazing back wall after you shoot that. <laughs> Man, I didn't know they was that spongy. Oh. I will tell you the thing I like about this year's uh, elites is the quarter inch uh, draw changes, yes. and I think that was pretty slick i i was like kudos to you uh elite for doing that because that's pretty cool man um and there's a lot you know half inch is a lot yeah it is half inches why have we been doing that for so many years and and there's a reason guys play with d loop lengths and 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 wrist um you know basically wrist mount lengths and and length of pull with their trigger releases or caliper releases and and it's because you know there's there's a lot of reasons but you know quarter inch draw um length changes are pretty sweet and i wouldn't mind seeing that on the rest of the bows and i i suspect other guys will copy that <laughs> what do you think about the new not to get on elite um because i know you haven't shot that but what do you think about that new uh tuning system that they have have you seen what they're doing with those i haven't i'm not super familiar with it so apparently you don't have to put it into a press to do any kind of tuning it, it's all in the in the limb pockets you can do all the tuning while you're out in the field if you have an allen wrench with you like it, oh, i think yeah, it, I think that's fantastic. I it sounds like uh, it sounds like Botech, but kind of Botech and Elite did the same thing this year. Oh, did Botech do that too? Well, they got the cam locks, and that's pretty much all you really would need to do. Um, you know, to tune your bow is is the the cam locks are pretty silk, pretty slick. Um, yeah, I, they're, I think they're fantastic. I think that's a great great addition um, from the reckoning um, kind of a target hunting bow. They they put those on the revolts this year, so. Let, let's jump into the the Botex. I so I'll be honest. I have not shot. I did not shoot the Botex this year, and have not shot them a lot in my life. So you're, I'm going to mm-hmm. lean completely on you with the Botex. But let's talk about their <laughs> new bow for 2020. Or the yeah, so they they came out with two uh, two new models, basically expanding on the Realm series again. Um, who you know, like Matthews, had a good platform, and and they've been riding it for a few years now, and. And we'll see if they make any changes. But um, this year, they, they you know, or let's go back to last year. In order to talk about this year's bow, we need to talk about last year's reckoning. That was a uh, pretty god ugly bow, <laughs> but uh, in my opinion, I um, agree. <laughs> it was like, wow, that's you, I'm going to use that to hit a deer. Yeah. Um, but so it had the cam lock technology, which basically allows you to um, laterally move the cam left to right basically shim the cam over without having to tear down the bow or do anything it's just basically two screws you loosen one tighten the other to move it um one way or the other and and it makes it makes basically um tuning the bow you don't have to have a bow press you don't have to go to a bow shop i think that's fantastic i love that um i i took two out of the box this year when they arrived um at my local bow shop i they kind of let me do whatever I want there. It's awesome. Nice. So yeah, I need that I took, set up. <laughs> yeah, I, well, my buddy owns it, and my, my other buddy works there. And so when wow. I'm not there and, and a new bow arrives, he says, hey, I got one set up, 29 inches, 70 pound, already set up for you. I'm like, perfect. Yes. You know, that's, what I, that's what I test them all for. And so um, he just he just basically, you know, first thing he does is sets it up for me, calls me, and then, you know, it's ready for me to get there and film. So uh, it's pretty slick. I, yeah. I really do appreciate it. Yeah. Um, but I got to set these ones up. I'm like, let me let me set those ones up. I just want to see how easy they are to tune with that new um, deadlock. And um, within less than 10 minutes, I had a bullet hole out of both of them. I mean, it was fast. I never even yeah. touched the deadlocks. It was it was like um, seven eighths center shot or 13 16 center shot, and boom, bullet hole. I'm like, holy crap! Like that, <laughs> that's fantastic. So um, I I've been critical of. A Botech in the past, probably like a lot of folks have, you know, with their limbs when they were doing, um, you know, have a lot of limb issues. Mm-hmm. Those days are pretty much behind them. Um, you know, they've, they've got a really solid platform now. And this Revolt and Revolt X, um, which I've got mixed opinions on the Revolt X, depending on who you are, um, it, it's a really good bow to buy. And so we're looking at, um, out, out of all the lineups this year, I think Botech was the smartest, uh, straight up. Um, I think they were extremely smart. So they went with a 30 inch axle to axle bow, but they went with a longer brace height with that, which I think is fantastic. Typically when you see people go with a uh, shorter uh, axle to axle, the brace height will shrink with it. And I don't really know why that is. Maybe it's performance. I don't know, but they went the opposite direction and they went with a 33 inch axle to axle called the revolt X, which is a six and a half inch brace height, which is right on the money. So both of these bows are extremely shootable. Second thing, 
Both of them have pretty darn good speeds. 335, 335 out of the Revolt, and I believe it's 340 out of the uh, Revolt X. And that's what's it. That's with a um, longer brace height. That's that's fantastic. You know, if they went down to a six, they would probably be one of the fastest bows on the market. So, which you, um, you know, you could you could talk about the SS if you wanted there, but um, that that deadlock. Let me talk about the Revolt X real quick. Okay. <clears throat> Not to get on stuff X and so, stop me if I say something. No, keep, that you keep going. To add I'm on loving to. this. Okay, so um the bro they're both right around four and a half pounds but let me talk about the revolt x and in order to do that i need to talk about the realm x so the realm x is a couple years old a couple yeah a couple years old and it's still going for six to seven hundred bucks on the used market which wow. is insane yeah. guys are still paying really good money for a realm x well there's a reason that's probably the best bow bow tech has ever created period i mean that is Bar none, if you took a vote from guys who shoot, who shoot bow tech, they would probably vote for the Realm X over any other bow um, percentage-wise. So that has been a, a fantastic bow. It was rock solid, and there wasn't really a lot of issues with that bow ever. It had a really good performance. It was about five to six feet per second faster than the Revolt X. The only, literally, one of the only differences is deadlock technology. So instead of going from split yokes, which are easy breezy beautiful cover girl to tune mm -hmm. uh you know they went with the deadlock which is extremely easy to tune so if you're a new guy and you're wanting to listen to podcasts and listen to youtube or watch youtube videos and learn how to work on your own bow and learn about camling and you know and center shot and all this stuff the revolt x and you want to be you do it yourself or the revolt or the revolt x is probably your bow this year Reason being is because you don't need a bow press. You don't need a bunch of money to get invested. And it's super extremely easy to get that bow to tune. Now, over the over the Realm X, super easy, super tunable, but it had yokes and you needed a bow press. That's really the only difference between that bow and the Revolt X. And you're getting a little bit more performance out of the Realm X as far as speed-wise goes. So if you have access to a press and you have access to doing your own tuning, you might as well just stick with the Realm X. But if you're looking to get into the game or looking to maybe just get a newer bow and you really loved your Realm X and the Revolt X has your bow, you're only losing about five feet per second, as I said. So um, both great bows, um, you know, good price points. Yeah. Um, what is the price point on the Revolt? Yeah, you're looking at about 1100 bucks. Okay, it's right there with yeah. most of the other ones except for... Oh, yeah. Yep, they're super adjustable. You know, your draw lengths go from like 25 and then um, 25 to 31 on the Revolt X, and then 26 to 31 on the Revolt. Um, and and they they really fit a long, broad range of shooters. And and they came out with it, came out with a fantastic bow this year. And and, and um, you know they've they've had some really nice shooting bows the last couple of years. But that that cam lock or the deadlock, whatever you want to call it on the hunting bows this year and then also swapping the brace heights where the six and a half should actually be on the 30. I, I just think that was brilliant. I think that was smart and they're very shootable bows and they pound and, and really fantastic. And they have a good, um, I believe they're coming at 80% right now for let off. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and I believe they still have the performance, um, disc on there too. So you can swap it from comfort to performance mode. So if you did want to have, um, you know, literally like no Valley and have that bow shoot like a, a Hoyt turbo, you could, oh, nice. <laughs> which, which I don't know why you would, but, um, <clears throat> yeah. So sorry, it's a dig at Hoyt. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, so that's, you know, I, I, I'm being really nice to Bowtech this year because they earned it. And, and, and man, I, I think it's, I think they hit a home run this year and, and they deserve, uh, kudos for that. Nice. They do, uh, offer draws in 50, 60, 70 pounds and, and um, yeah, I think I think that's going to be a really good selling bow this year. And it doesn't look like a you know a horrible looking club like the uh, Reckoning did. So. Right, it, it's a much better looking bow than it, than, than they have been in the past. That Reckoning was, was yeah, oh, yeah, was night ugly. and day. And, yeah. and if like I said, if you have the Realm X, I, you know personally I'd save your money. But um, if you're like if you're wanting to get something new and you're or you're new to the game, you want to get into tuning, that is your bow. Well, and that's the same thing. I mean, similar to the Matthews, like you said, they're still building off that same platform that they have for a couple of years yep. now. Like Matthews, if you have a Verdix, don't go buy a VXR. I, I don't see a reason <laughs> to do that personally. I mean, do what you yeah. want. It's your it's your money and your own your own thing. But kind of yeah. same thing with Bowtech. Yeah, if you're if 
if you're happy with your round, just just keep it and yeah, keep going. And they, and they aim really well. I mean, a lot of these bows, um, you know, they've been copying each other. Um, oh, yeah. And you know, there's there's been plenty of that going around, and 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 you know, a lot of these guys are widening their limbs for a more stable platform. They're starting to get caged risers. You know, they're starting to add all these these target. Um, qualities to the hunting rigs and that's kind of what you're seeing is target accuracy out of a hunting rig mm -hmm. which they've been preaching for a lot of years but now they're actually finally making the actual changes on the shooting platforms you know maybe extending the riser a little bit um widening out widening the limbs out you're getting giant freaking limb pockets now and and you're starting to see better shooting platforms for most of most of the uh manufacturers well you're seeing a lot of that target accuracy out of some of these hunting bows because they're making those changes which is really it for us, mm -hmm. us that's all i'm you know i'm not a target shooter i'm a hunter and so for us to hunt we we appreciate those changes so absolutely absolutely so uh one other bow i want to uh, talk about before we move on to kind of our next topic um there was big news few gosh few months ago with uh, john dudley making the transition from mm -hmm. hoyt to, to psc and everybody mm -hmm. thought that he was just absolutely bat you know what crazy to to do that because um, hoyt was so mm -hmm. amazing and that's what cameron haynes and everybody shot um i, I can't imagine john dudley going to psc to go into a uh, lower class bow you know he, he's just he likes the best of the best and so mm -hmm. so let's talk about the pse uh for 2020 what it looks like and um yeah maybe why he'd made that move well uh john dudley i don't know the guy personally but i you know from looking at it as an outsider looking in um john dudley wants to do what's best um for the archery industry in my opinion you know he offered to do bows for whoever it just wasn't pse you know he wants to do improvements and have his own perfect bow for each manufacturer from my understanding and pse is like oh hell yeah yeah and so um Who you know it? come on over and you know in my opinion hoyt this is where hoyt leads the archery industry they have the best ground game out of any bow manufacturer period you look at their roster for pro hunters it is insane. It they is. have they have almost everybody. So um, they've got the best ground game. And so losing Dudley, yeah, that's a hit. But um, you know they're they're almost better at marketing than than they are at anything else. That they have some really good ground game. And yeah. I'll leave it at that. Um, P, John Dudley moving away from PSE. Um, you know maybe they didn't want to work with them on creating their own bow. You know they they kind of had the Cameron Haynes edition, which was just you know strings and and logos and stuff, but I think Dudley was wanting to do more than that. And that's why you saw PSC kind of welcome him over and like, Hey, we'll take your suggestions. Come on over here, baby. You know, like we'll, we'll take you. And so he did, he made some, he made some changes to the, to, you know, with the NTN series out of the PSCs. And, um, you know, I, I think that he hit a home run, but you also starting to see do, you know, he's doing that with, with spot hog now too. And so, um, you know, I think he's, he's kind of just throwing that out there and he's being, you know, very entrepreneurialistic um however you say that word you know very yeah yeah um you know he's putting himself out there and he's he's making that dough and he's making hay while it's while while it's growing you know what i'm saying so he's got the hype he's got he's got the following he's cashing on cashing in on that cow right now is what you're seeing and um you know spot hog is the next one that you're going to see a knock-on series mark my words you're going to see one um and you know good for him so i don't know if it was him swapping to pse because he thinks it's the best platform i think it was the next platform to take on him well i, I kind of thought that same thing again I'm, i haven't been a psc fan or follower or anything like that i haven't shot one of them in in years i, sh I mean i shot the one this year but uh I haven't carried one in the hills hunting and and so when i saw him go there i, I wonder what psc will look like two or three years from now with him kind mm -hmm. of being a mastermind behind it because you're right he I, I agree with you i think he wants the best thing for the archery industry the um, archery hunting industry and making the best bow possible and i'll be interested to see what psc does in the next two to three years yeah you know i i think they're gonna keep doing these these platforms and then dudley's gonna shoot you know shoot 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 see what he likes to see to change and make some changes to it and um that's that's what you're going to see so um you know, he, he did a good job, you know, developing his, uh, my buddy bought one. He says it's extremely stable platform. Um, some of the, you know, the, the arrow stand thing. I don't know about that, man. I, that seems like a kind of a gadget more than a perform. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, you can toss that in there with the SCS Silent Connect uh, system Matthews has this year. I will so. tell you, I don't even have that on my VXR, by the way. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even put it on. Isn't it like 60 bucks for a freaking string and a connector? Yes. Like, it's, it's uh, oh my God. My backpack it, yeah. has a bucket that I put it in and it straps to my backpack. I'm like, I, I don't need that. I don't want that. That's just an extra <laughs> thing to get in the way. I'm, I'm not putting it on my boat. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Rabble. Well, no, no, no I, I'm right there with you. And, you know, I've only hunted out of a tree stand uh, three days of my life. <laughs> and that was with John or Brian from day six. And, and he had this little carabiner on a string. And I'm like thinking, well, why the hell does somebody need a little 60 or $80 SCS connect system that you don't when a carabiner and a string works, man, like, I, I don't understand. This is borderline stupid you know like i i really don't know why somebody would buy that so um that's, you know there's my dig at matthew so now i've gotten i've got hoyt and matthew oh man now, so. i say these hoyt and matthews guys they're gonna be burning down your yeah. house here in a yeah. little bit yeah well i i know i could go against but i got plenty of ammo against botech but they, they've treated they've treated me pretty well for the last couple years so uh, um but so the psc man um you know they had the bow of the year that they couldn't meet the demand and so um you know covid hit matthews shut down for a while um I, I i'll tell you a joke after we get off here about that but um so uh they're they're having some manufacturing um they're they're behind you know they're basically like a spot hog they are so far behind um so they had the best bow of the year in my opinion and that was with the pse mach one uh fantastic freaking bow everybody that shoots it says dude you're right that's the that is the bees knees of bows. Some guys are like, I'm not going to shoot it because the grip sucks. I'm like, have you shot it? No. Well, that's why you're saying that because they changed the grip this year. And I am total, total uh, fanboy of that Mach one. It's a fantastic freaking bow. Mm -hmm. um, now, having said that some guys have bought that bow and have brought it to my attention that there has been kind of a flaw with that bow. Um, the uh, cable guard, uh, typically points at two o'clock on that bow, which is where it needs to be. And for guys that tune and shoot PSCs, very rarely do they ever dick around with the roller guard cables or the cable guards. It's it's always pointing at two o'clock, and they can pretty much get the bow to shoot with that being at two o'clock. However, the way that that is threaded and the pressure from the bow, especially on the eighty pounders, which they offer, um, is pulling that over towards the strain and causing tuning issues and and vein issues and so it's a simple fix put some freaking loctite in there and you'd be done with it oh yeah but um that's that's literally really one of the only things that i've i've heard about that bow and, I, and i'm saying that because guys have bought that bow got a hold of me and they're upset because <laughs> i basically i watched your video and you convinced me to buy it i'm like okay sorry i apologize <laughs> yeah. it's a fantastic bow put some freaking loctite in there and go pound exactly. it's awesome it's great and, um, you know, hopefully they figure that out. They, they can either probably solve that with by reverse threading it, just reversing the threads mm -hmm. um, in the riser. So instead of pulling it loose, you're pulling it tight, right? Right. Um, or, you know, there might be, might be a, a more simpler solution than that, but uh, Loctite being one of them. Um, so once you solve that issue, it's a fantastic bow. And if you can get your hands on one, I would suggest try shooting one. And uh, it is a slug. It is kind of a turd. Um, and at 80 pounds, it definitely is stiff. It does feel like an 80-pound bow. Uh, <laughs> but at 70 pounds, it is a sweetheart. It is really a sweetheart. And so um, well, you want to go ahead and get into the NXT series real quick yeah. and then we kind of roll in it? Yeah, let's jump into that. Okay. So uh, so since you're shooting the 31 and a half, we'll just start off with the 31 um, NXT. How about that? That works. Okay. So – um, with a lot of the other bows, you know, um, I, I sound like a broken record here, but they're right there, right in there with the six and a half inch brace height, uh, with the 31 and all the bows come standard pretty much with 80 to 90% let off. Uh, one thing I would like to see is them actually unify their screws. It's like Torx versus Allen's. And then they had an argument at the manufacturing shop and like, which one were we going to use? And they said, screw it. Let's use both of them. And I'm like, <laughs> dude. I only want to use. I know that I know I'm bitching about what tool I'm using, just but right, twix, it really, twix. <laughs> it, dude, it's like just me, just unify that. Just use one. Make it, yeah. The continuity between your screws needs to be there. So, um, <laughs> if from from a guy working on a both perspective, yeah. it'd be nice to ha to grab one wrench. So, um, but anyways, but the, with the speed mods, which is a modification you can get from the manufacturer, is 65 to 75 percent, and that does speed the bows up a little bit. Um, you know, I'm giving the ATA numbers here, so you can minus about eight feet, nine feet off of them, uh, off the speeds given here, which aren't impressive. But I will say that they also kind of slow played their numbers this year. A lot of the bows that I tested through PSC 
shot better than what they claimed. So, um, you know, take take that for what it's worth. I think I think they were uh, under promising and over delivering this year on their speeds. So their ATA speeds could actually be accurate this year. Um, but the 31 inch uh, ATA bow NXT 31 is 329 feet per second. The three thir- the 33 incher at seven inches brace height is 322 feet per second, and the 35 at six and seven inch brace height is 328. And um, you know. The draw lengths do differ between them. If you're a shorter draw guy, the the, the 31 um, will easily fit you at 25 and a half, all the way up to 30 and a half. The 33, which seems like most of the guys are going with the 33, um, is a uh, 26 and a half to 32 inch um, draw cycle. So if you're an extremely long guy, that would be your bow. There's also a 35 inch. Um, long draw option as well but um that's from 25 to 31 and a half but they do have the 80 pound options on the 31 and the 33 um again man you know they are less stiff than the evoke series from last year which is what i'm shooting they are less stiff they are more stable and i think it's a better shooting platform it's and and even though i shoot my evoke extremely well it's a better shooting bow as far as being able to be more accurate and hold on target better than the evoke series Having said that, the Evoke series pounds, and it's faster, and it's substantially faster than the NXT series. So I, this year, I would hold on to my Evoke, and I'm holding on to my Evoke unless I decide to pull the trigger on a Mach 1. But if you want a little bit more shootable bow over last year's PSC than the NXT's, it's there for you, and it's got a great brace height. Um, however, your speed's going to be lacking compared to last year. And uh, one thing they did do that I did like it, is um, you know, they did do the bridge riser, and they actually made the riser a little bit longer, and then they went at a little bit steeper angle with the limbs, which took a little bit out of the um, uh, vibration out of the shot. So they're quiet and they're super dead in the hand, and it you know compare that to a Matthews, and and you'd have a hard time telling. And uh, and I say that because I think Matthews has some of the quietest and deadest in the hand bows out there. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, it, but it aims extremely well and it's nicer to shoot with a solid back wall, which for me is important. I like, I don't like that sponge. I feel like I get too many inconsistencies with the sponge. Um, and, and yeah, they came out with one hell of a bow. They did change the grips this year. They went to an actual grip, um, not just the riser. And that for a lot of guys has been the Achilles heel for PSC. And that's why they don't shoot them. That's why I haven't shot them for the last few years. Mm-hmm. It's because the grips suck. Yeah. I mean, they sucked. They felt like you're grabbing a two by four. And, you know, exactly. I hated it. And you're right there. It sounds like you're right there on the same boat, man. Oh, man. So. Yeah. that I've shot them in the past. And that's, that has been one of my biggest complaints. As you can tell, I, I really do care about the grips. I still miss my white grip. But, but yeah, I hated that because it just, yeah, felt like you're grabbing a two by four. I always had like a, oh, yeah. like an iron rod just sticking out there. I, I hated it. But, but dude, I, it's, uh, yeah. It's funny how Go those ahead. little things make the biggest difference though, to you. You know, you know that, that, well, that really matters. Grips are important because that is the the connection point between you and the bow. And people are like, well, you're bitching about a grip. Dude, I'm, oh. I'm, you know, consistency. I've said this a million times. Consistency and duplication means accuracy. If I can't consistently get my hand in the grip easily, the same spot easily every single time, then there goes my accuracy. That, that, that means a lot to me. And so... Um, you know, you don't see, here's one thing you don't see professional shooters doing, changing their grip or, or, or reposition, repositioning their grip when they're at full draw. You don't see that. Right. And when you don't have a grip that has a very easily consistent point of contact, then you're losing something. <laughs> and, and, you know, they, they change their grip. And, and, and if I remember right, it reminded me a lot of a weight grip. And it was a little bit more ergonomic, probably a little bit more skinnier, if I remember right. But I mean, it is right up there with a Hoyt grip, and it is fantastic. And uh, they did a great job changing some things around. And yes, you know, they're not speed demons this year, but speed really isn't everything. Yeah, I mean, that, like I said, the speed is the sexy thing people look at when they're looking at new bows. They'll look at that IBO right. speed or AT speed just because it is like, yeah, it's that sexy thing that they want to see. Oh, they want to see fast, they, you know, as fast as we can possibly right. get. But really, at the end of the day, and for me, especially as a hunter, that that really isn't what matters. What matters to me is what I can be accurate with. And and so, yeah, a, a little bit disappointing at a little bit lower speeds, but uh, I don't think that would ever, you know, run me off from buying a PSC. I, I, I still think that's pretty impressive. 
That's still fast. It's pretty good. That's still yeah, fast. And dude, yeah. And and like I said, I think they're kind of slow playing their numbers this year. They're they're actually faster a lot of the time than what they're 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 um, showing on their spec sheets. So, um, but and and so I guess we can move into the Mach one here and um and, and my pick for bow of the year and uh, they're they're fantastic. I I think that the grip over in the grips between this and the aluminum bows are different. The grips for the carbon bows in the past absolutely freaking sucked. Probably the worst grips I've ever had. I mean, I would never wish that upon my worst enemy that you had to deal with that grip. I mean, if you <laughs> liked it, good for you. But for me, no thank you. I shot the old um, uh, carbon uh, PSEs prior to this model, and I shot them once, and I was like, nope, and then put it back. That's it. I'm like, one and done, baby. You suck. I am not shooting you again. You could be the best, smoothest drawing bow in the world, but that grip is so bad. I'm not going to shoot it. So um, this year they changed the grip. And and I think when, when Corey, um, a buddy of mine that works for PSC, brought it, he's like, they changed the grip. Because <laughs> he knew. I think he just was like, they changed the grip this year. I was like, perfect. And so um, I told him, like, if they changed the grip, I would probably shoot it. And, um, and so um, when he had his, like, test model that he'd go around and show all the shops, he called me and, and um, we met at my, my local shop. And I got early access to it and did a video with him. And, um, and I was blown away. I was like, good God, this bow aims so freaking well. And I, I have my personal, um, you know, biases towards what I want to see out of a bow, right? I have what I shoot best for me. And that is about a 32 to 33 inch axle axle bow. That's about a six and a quarter inch brace height. That's about an 85% let off. That's a solid back wall. And, um, yeah, that's really about it. And about four pounds somewhere in there 4.2 pounds four pounds somewhere in there that's what i can build a really good bow for me well Corey, this bow cam comes in at six and one eighth inch 80 to 90 percent let off 32 and one eighth ata and 25 to 30 and a half or 25 to 30 and a half inch um draw at a 340 or 332 speed and with the speed mod which i wouldn't do is 340 and I'm thinking, good God, that's exactly why yeah. I love this bow. Yeah. Like, I'm like, you guys made Built me a for bow. You. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, dude, you hit it out of the park on this one. Like, for me personally, you know, we should call it the On Point series or something, man. Because yeah. I, I, I love, I love that bow. And, um, you know, obviously, as a shooter, it complements me and the my style the best out of any other bow I shot this year. So, um, like I said, you know they they are a little behind on the on their manufacturing and i think that's probably why you're not seeing much hype about them um it's because they're kind of hard to get a hold of and and if you do shoot one um they're flying off the shelves so um we've got a couple here locally in roseburg oregon um we have an 80 pounder that was that had my name on it and um, i went and shot it and i told him it was too stiff so it no longer has my name on it um and it's up for grabs and i think we have two 70 pounders here but um so if you want one you know call my local shop and, and they'll hook you up but um what, that's that's really about it what is your local shop i don't know what's what's the name of that shop it, it's called waldron's and it's a outdoor store so they have like this tiny little bow section and um it's it's pretty small right. so we need to give them a shout out though it sounds like they're pretty freaking awesome Dude, yeah. I mean, yeah. The the owners, I I grew up with their kid, Chris. We went to school together, and then um, Tom and Sasha own it. They're fantastic people. My buddy uh, Tanner, shout out to Tanner, works there. Um, young guy getting his feet wet in the archery industry and working on bows and stuff, and he's a pretty good shot and and um, you know doing a good job. And they treat me extremely well. And I and I try and toss some business for giving me early access to bows and allowing me to film and record and and um, it's it's a, it's a good good relationship there. So. Hey guys, I want to jump in real, here real quick and thank our sponsor for this podcast. We have a new sponsor for the podcast this month, which is Sneak Tech Boots. If you guys aren't familiar with Sneak Tech Boots, go online, check them out, or go to YouTube or Instagram and check them out. Um, what they are, they're not a normal boot. What they are is if you're an archery hunter and you've tried to sneak in on a deer, you've probably done the old adage of, of taking your boots off and sneaking in in your socks and um, if you're like me i have tender feet <laughs> i hate walking on rocks and sticks and so um, what these sneak tech boots do is they allow you to keep your normal boots on and they will let you clip they, what they are is they're, they're basically a, a, a the sole of the boot they'll actually clip onto your boots um, they have a nice soft felt like material on the bottom so that after you have them clicked onto your boots 
when you're walking, you can walk walk very quietly. They're very durable, very strong, um, and they are very quiet. And so it's really nice because when you head out to the mountains, you can just clip them onto your backpack. Really easy to carry, really light to carry. And then when you get into that that position where you're trying to sneak in on a deer or an elk or whatever you're hunting, and you need to be quiet, again, you don't have to take your boots off. And I, I love that thought. Um, I, I used to actually carry around moccasins to put on. I'd leave my boots and I'd put moccasins on. Um, but these are so much better because, you, like I said, you can just clip them onto your boots and, and you can. it takes you about, gosh, I don't know, 10 seconds to clip them on and they're quiet to clip on. But then as soon as they're on, you're back to the stock. It's really easy. Um, again, once you're done, you, you take them off your boots. You're still wearing the boots that you were wearing. You clip them back on your backpack and you take some nice pictures with your trophy animal. So again, if you haven't checked out Sneak Tech, and, and by the way, that's S-N-E-E-K-T-E-C, go online, check them out. Um, they're a really f- affordable as well. They, don't, they won't break the bank to, to buy them. Um, and again, they're very durable. They'll last for a long time, especially as much as we you know, have stocks on deer and elk and things like that. And so I want to thank them for sponsoring this podcast this month. Um, appreciate their, their partnership, their friendship. They're a great company, great company to work with as well. And that's one thing I do love is all the companies that we work with. You know, these are good people that we work with. They're honest. They want to do the best that they can for you. And, and Sneak Tech is definitely one of those companies. So I want to take a quick minute out of this podcast to, to thank them for sponsoring this podcast. Appreciate them. Again, go online, check them out, get you guys a pair of those, those Sneak Tech boots, especially as you prepare for, uh, for archer seasons coming up. Oh. oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, well, oh, so, yeah. It sounds like I know what your number one bow is, but I, as we, I want you to start <laughs> thinking like what your top five would be as we talk about a, a couple other things here. I, I do want yeah. I do have a couple, couple other questions I want to ask you. So we, we've kind of talked about the the high upper upper echelon bows of each each brand. Um, a lot of our listeners actually will reach out and say, you know, I, I'm budget minded, and so like for example, our our big you know. Um, banner sponsor is vortex optics and i love vortex optics because mm-hmm. they have the upper echelon glass and they have something that you know the guy on the budget you know the guy with four kids or you know like jeff barlow who has 20 kids can you know they can still <laughs> buy some of these lower end stuff um yeah I, i'm kidding jeff if you ever if you listen to this but <laughs> <laughs> but in in your mind uh, and let's keep it kind of in in those brands you know we talked about the PSE, the hoyt the matthews and the bowtech mm-hmm. um out of those brands for a budget-minded guy, what what would be the bow that would be their go-to? Uh, out of all the brands here for for bows, budget bows, uh, yeah. the Nitrix. Um, okay. That would be not the Nitrax, but the Nitrix, which is their midline bow, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that was last year's midline bow, and I like that bow more than their more than their flagship and their carbon bows, and it was like seven seven hundred bucks, I think. Wow! So eight hundred bucks. What did you and like it shot just it? fine. Um, I felt like I had everything that the other bows did. Um, not, not everything, but I felt like the the quality and the shootability was there. I think I felt like it was actually quieter and more dead in the hand than the flagship bows was. Wow. And uh, it just seemed like it was like, why is this thing eight hundred bucks? Why is it? Why is this not a flagship bow? Um, and you know, there's a few component um, uh, cheap. Well, I'd say cheaper components on it, but um, they did save some money and cut some corners on it, but. Um, it shoots just as good or better than last year's flagship bows, in my opinion, and that's a fantastic bow. So um, the PSE does have some really nice um, flagship or uh, mid midline bows. They probably have one of the best selections, mm-hmm. and uh, you should probably take a look at those. But the Nitrix was probably one of my favorite bows. Um, what was the uh, Botex midline bow this year? Um, drawn a mind blank it was pretty good but i think the hoy actually outdid it i i had those um in a bow comparison i did a mid bow mid bow mid-level bow comparison shoot i've shot so many bows um drawn a mind blank but um the the bow tech one didn't win i'll put it that way um i believe the pse beat it out and then the hoyt beat it out so if you're looking to save money um buy a realm x um yeah. one of the that's a great bow and you could get it for 600 bucks loaded probably and um, but if you want to go new, a Nitrix would be a really good bet. Well, now I'm kicking myself a little bit because I was at a shop in in Colorado Springs. Um, actually, you guys may know it's Bill Pellegrino's shop, um, and they they tried to talk me into to shooting that Nitrix, and I was like, no, no, you know, I 
you know that I, I guess I needed a little humble pie because like no it's kind of that lower end I want the I want the upper mm-hmm. ones you know I want the the best of the best and I I guess I should have <laughs> I should yeah. have shot it <laughs> man I I told you when I when I shot it I and I was shooting it for the first time with Tanner at the shop and, and we, a lot of times we'll shoot the bows together for the first time. And uh, I looked at him. I'm like, why is this not the flagship bow? I'm like, this is so stupid. Like, <laughs> like, what are they doing? Like, they just killed their flagship bow. If people shoot this bow, there's no point in shooting their flagship bow. You're getting everything you need out of this bow. I mean, it's in my opinion, it was a better on the shot shooting bow than <laughs> than their flagships were. Man, it was like. That- yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. That but, speaks volumes, um, though. I, I think to a lot of our listeners, hearing you say that right there, I think that'll bring a lot of comfort to a lot of people that they, that they can go out and get that bow, and it's going to mm-hmm. compete with the, the flagship. You know, and, and for a lot of us that are hunters, a lot of us don't need the, the best of the best. or You know, we don't have to prove our deep pockets by, yep, here's, I've got this flagship bow in my in my case here kind of a thing. You know, if, if you can go out and kill an animal with whatever, I mean, whatever you spend on it that's all that really matters but it, you know some people do like to buy new bows and if you can get a new bow for a decent price like that nitrix man that's that's a sweet deal so i think that'll be, bring a lot of comfort to to our listeners yeah and you know if you're a big guy you know the drive um xl 3b um or the the 3b uh, by psc those are shooters i mean they really are and you're you're missing the boat if you're not at least shooting or dipping your toe in the water with the mid levels and you're trying to save money me personally if we're talking about new bows, um, or or if you're in the bow market, buy better accessories and a mid-level bow than a high-level bow and shit accessories because it is very important that your accessories are are your strong suit. I'm talking sight and rest, and if you don't have those really dialed in and you, you can't really rely on those a, a cheap apex will will cost you accuracy i promise you you may not notice it if you haven't shot a you know a black gold a spot hog or a sherlock or something like that it, it will cost you accuracy and it's not as reliable really straight up i mean you're relying on re- relying on like a polymer versus like a hard um machined piece of slab of metal on your side of your bow or aluminum and and I've never broken a spa hog, but I've broken pretty much everything else out there. And, <laughs> and, uh, and you know, I'm hard on my gear, man. I'm really hard. And, and, you know, it's pass or fail. If I, if I have to cater to my gear, it's out of there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's out of there. Last thing I want to worry about, the only thing I want to worry about is doing my job and that's executing a shot while I'm out there. I don't want to have to worry about my, my rest dropping on the shot or my broadhead expanding. I don't want to worry about that crap. So um, I try and keep it as as reliable and generally as simple and as I can to make sure that I'm just eliminating variables, right? I mean, once you've missed, like I have so many times, and you've gotten creative on ways to fail, you, you start you start figuring out the ways not to fail, <laughs> and so you, you start coming full circle. And that's kind of what I've done here is is um, you know accessories 100% more important than the bow, 100%. I think I know the answer to this question. I'm going to ask you a rapid fire question here, real quick. What's Garrett Weaver's mm-hmm. uh, side of choice? Uh, well, there's a few. Uh, if you're a fixed pin guy, so the, straight up answer the question. I won't give you the, the roundabout answer. So, right now, my favorite side is the Fast Eddy XL 3 pin. Um, I did make the modification to it where you have three pointers for each, you have one pointer for each pin. So now there's three pointers, which I expect Spot Hog to do here in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, that's that's the best of both worlds. I can shoot out to 60 yards without dialing and, you know, um, hashtag accurate. You know, I can do it accurately. I'm not just really, you know, lobbing arrows out there and hoping I, I – no, I can do it accurately enough to kill an animal and for sure kill an animal. And uh, if I if I have time to dial, which every time I've shot at an animal, I think I've had time to dial. I can't oh, yeah. think of a time where I didn't have time. And, um, and, and for those longer shots, man, it's it's nice. Oh, 67 yards? Oh, okay. You know, it's mm-hmm. like – those those half yards or 67s or those or those 65s where you know do you do you just split the pin gaps because that's not where your arrow is going to go right. you know it's that halfway between your pins isn't actually you know the five yard increment if you look at the way the trajectory of your arrow is so um it, you know for for the best of both worlds i suggest that if you're a guy that can't focus on one thing uh or the you know 
a single pin would be good for you if you don't mind focusing on more than one thing but you don't have to worry about the dialing you know a seven pin you know a black gold or a a spot hog you know those are two of the most reliable ones out there that i really like um you know there's there's a few others but you know those are pretty much my two go-to's that i would stick with well that makes me feel good i've always been a spot hog guy this year i actually switched and did the uh black gold what is it the ascent mm-hmm. verdict three so it's the three pin slider site um yep. really I, those I, guys actually I added it. another pointer to it too yeah i think those guys those guys did my my trifecta upgrade yep. um and you know i actually called them on the phone um a while ago back when i was trying to do basically do what dudley was doing right you know, like he's living my dream right now <laughs> by like coordinating and helping people develop their products so i call black gold i'm like listen guys no one else wants to hear this, <laughs> but I've got this idea. It's got like thousands of thousands of thousands of views of people who want to buy my idea. You guys need to do this. And um, we, I never ended up doing anything with them, but um, oh, it's, I'm glad to see that they eventually <laughs> yeah. use that idea. I'm not saying they use my idea, but somebody somebody came up with the idea or decided to use the the extra pointer idea, which just it just makes sense. It so, does. Um, I'm going to give it's you credit nice on have. it. I'm absolutely going to give you credit on it because oh, well, it's pretty awesome well, too. Well, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if anybody else would, but I, I definitely appreciate it. Uh, uh, you know, shoot. it's the thought that counts. But um, yeah. yeah, so, you know, if for guys that are that are looking at buying a Hoyt, um, you know, maybe a, a you know, because the, even the PSE Mach 1s are like 1700 bucks, yeah. 1600 bucks, and, and so if it's between that or buying a shitty site, you know, go with a lesser bow and buy the site, you know. Yeah. Don't don't cheap out on that stuff. Even a nice stabilizer. If you're going with like a three inch um, stabilizer, whatever they're, I, limb I know saver. what limb, yeah, limb saver, S coil, yeah. four inch. That's not doing anything for you, right? Like spend eighty bucks and get a good good you know ten inch stabilizer and just see what that does for you. You know, if you're hunting out of a blind, I get it, but um, you know, yeah. each to his own. Yeah, absolutely. I got a couple questions, more questions for you before I let you go, Garrett. The, the, the next one is, um, well, we have a, our audience really covers the entire United States, and I know mm-hmm. you're a Western guy. I'm a Western guy, but like you said, you've hunted out east, um, talked to a lot of people out east. For the guys that live east and west, what would you, well? Let's start with east. What would you recommend first for the east eastern hunters? What would you recommend for the western hunters? Well, um, you know, Matthews is pretty much making what, what Eastern guys want. And so, um, you know, they're offering those right now. They're offering those shorter axle axle guys. But I get a lot of guys that are hunting out of tree stands that are saying, dude, I don't know why everybody's saying you have to have a short axle axle bow to hunt out of a tree stand. Like, you don't have to. And so I totally, I totally get it. I had plenty of room in my tree stand. You can shoot a 45 inch axle axle bow if you want it out of a tree stand, right? Uh-huh. So I get it. But for those blind, um, uh, guys hunting out of blinds, not guys that are blind, but uh, <laughs> guys that are hunting out of blinds, um, you know, those shorter axle to axle bows and those shorter, you know, more compact stabilizers. I get it. You know, the VXR 28 would be a sweet choice, but I mean, you also have a revolt. You also have a PSE and you also have an alpha. You have four bows that are all within two inches of each other and, you know, ATA. And so you're really, you're only adding an inch to the roof towards the roof or towards the ground of of your blind. And so, you know, it's it's really each to their own. I think guys find reasons to buy what they want. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it, you know, some of it's not, you know, some of it's personal preference, but I think a lot of it is, is successful marketing. Um, so Eastern guys, you know, I a lot of guys like to shoot lighter setups. Um, you know, I, w- I would harp on on setups more than both more than bows. I, I think that what they're using to shoot their deer with uh, is more important than than um, the bow they're using. So. Um, me personally, if, if you can shoot the, the longest bow possible that you can fit in your blind, I think that's inherently more accurate, uh, just because it's a more stable platform. If you can start f- widening out your platform, like the, like the Matthews are doing in, in starting to go with like a caged riser or a bridged riser, like they're doing, I think they're really catering to that market that you're talking about. Okay. I, I get what you're saying. And I, yeah, I think people can find a reason whatever that reason is to buy whatever bow they they really want like you said a lot of it's probably marketing you know matthews does a great job marketing to the east 
Hoyt does a mm-hmm. great job, Mark. Like you said, <laughs> Hoyt's ground game right now, it rivals Mountain Ops, I think. I think Mountain Ops has one of the best marketing <laughs> teams in the world. But <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, Hoyt, I agree. Hoyt's I agree. Right 100%. With them, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not saying whether I like or dislike either of those companies. No, I'm just no, saying no. they got the best marketing department or they spend the most money. Yeah, either exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love your approach, by the way, through this whole thing. You're, in everything is your, <laughs> your opinion and all that. And I, I, I love that. I hope people... I hope people appreciate your your whole approach because <laughs> you do shoot everything. You do. I mean, like you said, you gave how many how many arrows did you shoot from January to August? Eighteen thousand. Eighteen. Well, that was the year I shot the Halon. I haven't done that since. I probably hang around ten thousand now. That's, um, that's still a whole lot more than any of the rest of us. More more shoot. than your average guy. Yeah, yeah, I shoot a tenth of that a year. So no. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, so. I love your approach. How it's all your, you know, hey, this is my opinion and all that. But I, I hope people understand how, you know, your opinion definitely is backed by experience well, and facts as well. Well, I, I appreciate them, and I was actually watching um, an Instagram clip, um, and, and I guess this is kind of validate myself, which is kind of a douchey thing to do. But um, so, you know, there, I was watching a video of Levi Morgan talking about hinges. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and how, you know, and, and back tensions on the walls and, and, and how, you know, certain releases aren't probably good for limb stop rests. And, and, um, I'm just thinking like, man, if people were so objective, like he was, he is accuracy first, right? Like he is accuracy and granted, yeah, he gets paid millions through Matthews, but if he wasn't the most accurate, I know, I don't know if he wouldn't be shooting them. I know he shot Hoyt for a while, I believe. And, Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, arguably maybe didn't do as what hasn't done as well with Matthews, but, um, you know, the guy was talking about a hinge and how accuracy can depend on how hard you're pulling against the back wall and then the angle of your hand. And I'm like, you know, that's why I don't shoot that bow or that's why I I shoot this bow or that's why, um, I, I do some very small things that make a big difference. And, and to see him talking in a similar fashion was like, dude, you know, I'm, if, if that guy's kind of, if I'm echoing that guy, I'm probably on the right path. Yeah. So yeah, if there's anybody um, to emulate, that that's a pretty good one to emulate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's a freaking killer on and off the field. Mm-hmm. That guy is an absolute shooter, and um, you know, I take a lot of what he says with a with a huge grain of salt. Yeah. So. Well, again, he's got the experience similar to you. You have that experience. You you've put the reps in. You've done the work, and so when when he says something and conversely with you when you say something there's a lot of experience that that backs that up as well and a lot of well experience research studying you know i i know you're kind yeah. of a, a student of the game as well so um oh yeah that, that makes a big difference as well yeah yeah absolutely so one more question for you garrett and then i'll let you back to your day um and i kind of asked you this be, or sent this to you before we got on this call and kind of mentioned it before but what would be your top five bows for 2020 Oh, uh, so Mach 1, number one, obviously. Um, Revolt X would probably be up there. I actually liked the Hoyt lineups more this year. Um, And my shoulders, you know, all those arrows that I brag about shooting and stuff, they do take a shoulder or a a toll on my shoulders. I I don't have a great draw. Um, Like, like me personally, I don't draw a bow like you're supposed to. and and, And it started with the Halon because I was shooting too long and too heavy. And I did that for too long mm-hmm. and it just straight up messed my shoulders up. So anybody that ever watches my videos are like, dude, you need to learn how to draw a bow. And it's like, <laughs> well, both of my bows or both my shoulders are like gone. So, um, <laughs> so I, I, I kind of gravitate towards smoother drawing bows and that's the main reason I haven't bought one of those Matthews in many years. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I'd probably gravitate towards the, um, the alpha, uh, through Hoyt, I wouldn't mess with the with the carbon bow, but the Alpha was really right there. The um, the the actually the VXR twenty eight um, being a little bit lighter, I did like that, yeah. and I could tell the difference, and I didn't really notice a difference in how either of them held differently. Um, I, I in the video, I believe I even said, you know, I expect to like the thirty one and a half better. And when I drew and shot the twenty eight, I'm like, ah, I might have to shoot them both again now. Yeah, I remember and, that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and that sure surprised me, man. So the VXR twenty eight would probably be in there as well. Um, honorable mentions, although you know Prime, Prime's got some great bows. You know, I shot the Synergy back when the Synergy was the first line of the Synergy. Um, that bow had issue after issue after issue, but I've never shot a bow more accurately. Period. Ever. That is the most accurate bow I've ever shot. Um, it it was finicky. It was. Uh, 
pain in the butt to tune. It broke down on me all the time, but when it shot, it shot great. So, um, you know, the, the prime black series, um, they're good bows. I don't like how many pieces to the string there are. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the strings that come on their bows, they claim are great and they use great material, but everybody I talk to, including myself, um, I, I, I just, I would swap out that string. Um, and that's 200 bucks because it's like a, what a seven piece string, I think, right, or something yeah. like that. So, uh, um, I shot the one this year. The thing that got me this year was they have that ginormous circle like right in my eyesight when I'm going to pull back, and I can't I can't see past that thing. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you, man. There, there's with that synergy. I you know you, you should always wait to buy a car you know for a few years to see what kind of issues it's going to have. Well, um, they're they're working through a lot of stuff. I think the rigidity of the riser probably adds to some of their problems with um with some of the early issues. Um, cause he's a little bit stiffer riser, but, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of good to be had with those bows and they are inherently accurate, man. I mean, the, the, the swerve they have in the bottom and, and just the synergy technology in general, holy freaking smokes are those accurate. And so, um, you know, for a guy and, and they have a pretty decent draw and, and I like the way that the let off changes, although it does change your, your draw length, um, slightly, um, you know, it's it's a really good bow and it's definitely not one to count out and I want to give a special kudos to to Elite for doing the quarter inch um, draw stop or draw changes I think that was great too but so yeah to, to answer your question it was Mach uh, the Mach one the Revoltex probably the Alpha um, then probably the PSC um, NXT thirty three and you, you'd have to maybe the VXR twenty eight and that's only because of my shoulders gotcha. That's that's a pretty good list right there. I, I you can't argue that list. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's it's it's user preference, man. I mean you're shooting the the, the VXR thirty one and and on a, you know I've got a lot of guys you know a lot of friends that shoot the, the Matthews and and they're there's really no complaints. I mean we're when when I do want to get this out there when we're comparing all these bows. Uh, and and I do speed tests in all of them. Why? Because that is not a personal preference. That is a fact. That is how fast the bow is shooting. But when we're talking about you know stability, how it aims on the shot, how it feels on the shot, we're almost splitting hairs. I mean, all the bows are so close nowadays. It's like it's it's which marketing got to you better, and what bows did you shoot? What ones did you really give a chance? And um, you know, trying to be as objective as possible is, is extremely hard because as soon as I saw the Mach One specs, I'm like, well, freaking game over. Yeah, you know? that, that's built and for you. That's yeah. So you know, you got to take what I what I say with a grain of salt sometimes, and and just like anybody else when it comes to these bow reviews, but you know, the broadhead reviews, um, all these things, they have their little biases in them when it comes to personal personal preference, and 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 you know, the the results are the results. They're not biased. They're not skewed. Um, you know, there's been some folks out there saying that you know the the giant broadhead test that we did was was uh, biased and all this stuff. I'm like, dude. <laughs> Uh, you were yeah. honest about it. There was so much work that went into that. I don't know if we'll ever do it again. Um, <laughs> but you know, like the results were the results. Yeah. And just because your head wasn't number one, go pound sand, man. Exactly. Like, and so, yeah, I, I know I'm getting on my soapbox there. So long story short, like I say, in the end of all my videos, go shoot the bows for yourself. And if you're wondering if the bow has enough oomph to kill an elk, which is probably my number one question. Yes. Yes. Your bow has enough oomph to kill an elk. Um, your arrow and your broadhead are probably the more more important part of the equation there. So, um, which is another conversation. <laughs> yeah, and being able to make a good shot, whatever bow you can, yeah. you can make a good shot with. That's where it comes down with me. If you can make a good shot and whatever bow feels com most comfortable to you, that's yeah. the bow that you really should be shooting. But I will say though that the podcast like this that we just did, just you know, this is very informative. This is the facts. That there, you know, there is there's some opinions in here, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but the facts are the facts, and, and experience is experience, and you can take a lot from people's experience. You know, yep. you're not who you are because you don't have the experience. You have that experience. John Dudley has that experience, and so I, I think for guys, average guys like myself, or most guys that listen to this podcast, mm -hmm. you know, I think we can take this, learn from it, and, and take you know take that knowledge to the bow shop shoot these bows and like okay yes i remember garrett saying this yeah that makes sense okay this feels mm -hmm. better oh yes that is the right grip for me kind of a thing it helps them remember some of the things that really are important when they get to that shop and so so i i think there's a lot of value 
in, in these kind yeah. of conversations. Yeah, and, and, and you know, we didn't talk about obsession. We didn't talk about Athens. You know, there's a lot. Of, we didn't really talk about elite. There's a lot of those out there that has still haven't been touched by by you know Taryn and I's conversation here. Yeah. And and just because you didn't talk about it doesn't mean they're not relevant. Like you should still go check them out. You should still go shoot them all. Um, you know, Taryn hated the back back wall of the of the elite. It sounds like I would too. <laughs> I want <laughs> but, you to do it, and I want you to text me and tell me what you think. Of it. <laughs> I will. I will. I I think I think the bow rack. Um, which is about an hour and 20 minutes north of me might have elite. I'm not sure if they do, but all these bows that we don't have around here are ones that I don't review. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I might start reaching out to manufacturers directly. I'm like, dude, I'm just, you know, this is what I do. I'll send it back to you. I promise, you know, like just send it to me for a couple of days and let me do a video on it. So, which I doubt anybody would take me up on, but, um, I, I don't know. Getting, like I said, your experience behind that bow, getting your thoughts on it. I, I think they should take you up on that, especially companies like the obsessions and, and the elites, you know, that, you know, mm-hmm. they're not as big out here in the East as the Hoyts and the Botex and the, you know, some of these other Matthews. So it, I think it'd be good to get some of that, some more, that, that's good marketing. That's, that's more attention. I, I think it would be a good idea to do that. Oh, for sure. For sure. So, well, I, I appreciate you having me on. Hopefully I didn't, you know, there wasn't too many numbers in here. I know I ran through them pretty fast and, and I spit a lot of uh, specs at people here. So, um, you know, if, if, if that was, hopefully that was what you're looking for, man. It absolutely was. And the great thing about a podcast, and I've done it many times on your podcast, you can hit that, you know, 15 second rewind <laughs> button. And what did he say? What's the, what's the ATA on that kind of a thing? So yeah, there, yeah. There, we did there, You, you gave us a lot of information on this podcast. Was it, it, it's exactly what I was looking for. Cause again, right now, Perfect. and I'm one of them, we're, we're trying to get ready for the hunting season. We know what tags we have, so we want to be prepared for them. Um, and I'm actually, I don't even have an archery tag, but I do have the total archery challenge coming up. And so there's a lot of these things yeah. that I'm. I'm thinking about as well as everybody else. So I, I think this is a great time for this podcast. I think this will be very informative for everybody. Heck yeah. Have you ever so, tried a uh, side uh, side stabilizer? I have one and I have not even tried it. <laughs> Dude, for those challenges, those mountain challenges. Is it worth it? It's worth it. <laughs> the extra weight's worth it there. So that's why I talk about buying a light bow to put the weight where you want it. Yeah. And that's that's right where I'd put it. There's a lot of guys. So we're, we're, I'm going with a group of other guys and, and they all have it and I – I should put it on and start getting used to it. I just, I've never shot with it and this is a horrible mentality, but I always think, okay, I want to shoot my bow, how I'm going to shoot it when I'm hunting. And I'm probably not going to have that on, but maybe I should even have that on when I'm hunting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll have well, to start trying it. Yeah, man. Well, I, Hey, I appreciate your time, man. And, and, um, yeah, thank you for having me on the show. It's been a great time. Yeah. Thanks Gary. Appreciate your time as well. Hopefully we can stay in touch and, uh, I'll, I'll have, probably have you back on again if that's okay. I I would love it. I'd love it. Cool. Thanks, man. All right. See ya. See ya. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your uh, support for eHunter and everything that we're doing over here. Again, I want to thank our sponsors, Vortex Optics, as well as the sponsor for this podcast, Sneak Tech Boots. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Um, like our stuff. Follow us on social media for any updates. We're going to have some new podcasts coming out soon. That won't just be newscast. Uh, that will be a little bit more fun and a little bit more entertaining. So, so stay tuned for those. But appreciate you guys. If you have any comments or questions, send them our way. Bye, guys. <laughs>